Okay, well this is a 2N3055 transistor. You can see there's lots of little bits attached to it at the minute. And I'm just going to show you it at this angle so you can see that the two poles are not directly in the center, these, and at the minute I've got them closest to me. And that's important because that's how you tell the difference between the emitter, the base, and the collector. And so, which is which? Right, well, with the poles closest to you, that pole, the one on the left, is the emitter, the one on the right is the base, and the actual body of the transistor, so all this metal bit, is the collector. So, that's all confused me when I first started, so I thought I'd just point that out. And now I'm just in the middle of turning this into another Bedini circuit, so you, I wish you could see this, but it's all blurred. I have a diode, 1N4001, and that's going across from the emitter to the base, so the stripe is closest to the base side. And then on the right hand pole as well, which is the base, I have a resistor, and at the minute this is a 430 ohm resistor. And that will be going to my potentiometer, also known as a POS. And then connected to the casing of the transistor is my other diode, which is a 1N4007, and that's connected to the collector and I'll be going to the charging batteries positive. There we go. One fully soldered Bedini circuit. It's a real shame this video is so blurry, but um, I say you get the idea where everything's positioned. Uh, this 430 ohm resistor is now going to this potentiometer, and you can twist the top there, and that changes the resistance of the trigger. So there you go. Just got to build the second coil, and hook all the wires up. Okay, so on to the coils. Um, like I said, it's got two wires wrapped around the same core, so it's basically a bifilar coil. Uh, one wire is a 22 gauge wire, and the other wire would be a 26 gauge wire. Um, the gauge basically relates to the, th the thickness of the wire, so the lower the gauge, the thicker the wire. So the 22 gauge wire is going to be the thicker one, which we're going to use for the power coil, and the thin wire, the 26 gauge wire, is going to be the trigger coil. So, uh, yeah, why do we use um, the two different sized wires? Well, that's a good reason. The 22 gauge wire we use for the power coil because it's thicker and thus there's going to be less resistance in the circuit uh, when it makes the magnetic field. And then we use the thinner coil for the trigger wire because um, we don't have to worry so much about the resistance, but uh, we could use a thicker wire for the trigger coil as well but we don't need to, and it would just make the coil bigger. Say if we were to look at a cross-section of the electromagnet. So as you can see, the 22 gauge and the 26 gauge wire fit very snugly together. But then if we look at what it would be like when we use two of the same gauge wire, you can see we can't fit nearly as many turns on the same core. So um, the wires are much more compact, so we can get a much stronger electromagnet using the 22 and the 26 gauge wire than we say if we were using uh, two 22 gauge wires. So these two wires are wrapped in parallel around the core and uh, you want to use at least 650 turns around the core of both the wires so you're going to wrap them together at the same time. Uh, I'm using closer to a thousand turns on the coil but the more the merrier. And some people have managed to get this to work using an air core, but I think that would only work if you're using very strong magnets, which we don't want to use. We want to use uh, fairly weak ceramic magnets. So you're going to need to use uh, some kind of metal core. And um, lots of things you could use. You could use just a regular steel bolt, put that down the middle of the coil. Or, as Bedini recommends, you could use welding rods, just cut to the right length, and then just uh, whack as many as you can into the centre of the coil and then stick them all together with super glue. Now this is better than using just a single lump of metal because it uh, creates less magnetic flux in the coil so the uh, magnetic field can switch much more quickly and this helps the effect of uh, charging the batteries. Now you could use a few other things if you can't use welding rods. Say I can't get welding rods so what I'm using is magnetic sand or you could even use uh, just regular iron filings Mix that with a bit of glue, a uh, fair bit of glue, so you have basically consistency of cement. Shove all that mixture into the core, 
and uh, just let it set and then you've basically got yourself an iron core made of lots of tiny little bits of iron and that really reduces the magnetic flux and yeah that's possibly one of the best coils you could use in my experience anyway but I haven't tried the welding rods so not too sure about that maybe somebody can uh, shed some light on that if they've ever compared them Right now let's start putting this together so here we have the first diagram I showed you so we've got the transistor, the two diodes, the resistor and the potentiometer all hooked up already then we have to hook up five wires look a bit like that so we've got two wires connected to the emitter one wire connected to the collector a wire on the diode coming from the collector and a wire coming from the other end of the potentiometer and then what we're going to do is we're going to number these wires just to make it nice and simple so we've got one two three four and five so it looks a bit like that and okay so now we've got that sorted um, we move on to the coil there we go so here's the coil and now you probably have uh, two wires coming out of the top of the coil and two wires coming out of the bottom of the coil the red wires in this diagram are the power coils wires and the blue wires are the trigger coils wires okay so now we're going to number these as well so we've got three two four and six look a bit like that and then something I haven't shown you yet we've got the batteries and uh, this doesn't look very logical but this is how we're going to wire the batteries up self-explanatory really the battery marked with the S is the secondary battery which will be charging and the battery marked with a P is the primary battery and now you can see we've got um, three loose cables coming off of here and we're going to number those as well so we've got one five and six so let's put it all together there we go, so now these are the three parts that you build separately and then to hook all those wires together, let's have a look at uh, how these loose cables are numbered there you go, now that looks really complicated with loads of numbers everywhere but uh, I'm going to upload all these images onto another page somewhere on the internet and I'll post links in the description section so you'll have access to all of these but uh, really it's very simple the wires that are numbered the same are going to be connected together so for example uh, the wire on the transistor that's marked 2 will be connecting to the bottom of the core which is also marked 2 and that's a blue wire there for the trigger wire for example so all those are going to connect together so let's see how they all connect together on the schematic so that's the basic Bedini schematic and there you go those are the connections and I'll make a nice compact circuit without too many loose wires going all over the place and um, yeah that's pretty much it now there's one part of the schematic that I haven't actually mentioned yet uh, just for simplicity because it's not absolutely essential for the motor to work but it's more of a safety feature and that is one of these which is a neon bulb now the neon bulb like say it's a safety feature really it acts in a way like a spark gap it, um, it only turns on when it's got about uh, 90 volts going through it so most of the time it's going to be off but with the Bedini motor it's um, letting out very high voltage pulses that could fry your transistors and you're going to end up having to build it all over again basically like uh, I've gone through about maybe 20 of these transistors it's ridiculous even with the neon because I short circuit it but without the neon I'm going to short circuit even more so the neon essential has to be in the circuit so let's hook that up as well so very simple very simple very simple this is the first diagram I showed you before so all we have to do is hook up the neon, one end of the neon, to the emitter and one end to the collector. So it would look a bit like that. Very simple. So those are the basics when learning how to build a Bedini motor. You now uh, know how to wire the circuits and to hook up the batteries you know uh, pretty much all you need to know. Uh, there's still plenty more information online about um, how to build the rotor and the construction of the motor itself. 
and I will be making more videos soon about um, the motor, uh, like how to test it and how to uh, find out how much power you're getting out of it and how to improve it and how to hook up more coils. So yeah, still lots to talk about, but you now know how to build one, so go do it. Build it.